Hello, how are you? You're at the police station. Close uh, proximity here. There's, there's no hiding. Good to see you on a warm day, sir. Yeah, as opposed to when it's freezing. Oh, I agree. That's still happening in the power outage. I just stopped and threw it on the way back. I don't want you to hate me, right? No. Yeah. So much to do. For for this one? Yeah. For for this one, it was about uh, an hour. Not a lot. On that particular line? I don't know. That would be a question for staff. Okay. Yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Sir, okay, no, that's the patient. Right, yes. let's have smaller. Yes, oh no, I agree. I don't understand why it's Okay. And, 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 the, and the question, okay, so. Okay. Uh, uh, so, which we need to finish up. The other thing we need to do is we need to talk to them about the traffic. Where this particular portion, we don't have one. In particular, uh, section 290, we, we generally ask for a survey. I've done that in the past. Yeah. So, so the I think that would be a, that, that, goes, that goes to item number four in terms of traffic study. So, uh, the issue with the purpose cover that's not a that, right because of because of the, the dogs, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. 
to me. And then um, from there, we'll just find what, what portion we are going to be able to Good. Hi. Hi. I'm Bob. Hey, Bob. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good to be here. We have a plan? Yes. Do I? I believe this is for assuming. We only have one, one member absent, so I think we have four of them. Reitz? Robert? Robert? Oh. Hey, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Oh, go ahead start. You see? Okay. I asked for a high resolution image. Very, very good. They still have things in nature, but our site plan renders. I'm going to pull it up, but we need to press on it. For the application materials. Well, we know it's the. Comes in site plan stage as opposed to right. no, no, but the zoning of lot, the lines won't change. Right. But you the actual like uh, like all it's not going to be like that. I'm all unaware of or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's but, like, that's but, not well, that's 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 Okay, so, so, so I understand it. So, I don't know what you're saying. Got the uh, ordinance all done. It's like a whole month yeah. okay. out. So, comment. That, that's I'll fine to you. If it's any, you know, I haven't started. Got to make sure you're, it's off. It's on, I think. So, yeah. But I figured, Are we recording now? Yeah. It's there. So even though the mic is slashed through, it's on. I'm missing the handout. Is it one thing? Yes. So let me make an announcement about how this works. Okay. Uh, basically, we're constantly recording, so uh, we're very on the camera. Everyone to be really quiet as if they're not. The council has four does a stick of any how many minutes you follow? Okay, I'll say four. Just go through a number. Okay, and less than No, this this we, we, we print. We print. This, yeah. Now we we this this is and that's where my marks and stuff are there when I do my I do it on paper. Hey, we're uh, starting a little late tonight, but uh, four minutes is not a big deal. I hope. Uh, we we'll call the meeting to order. Um, I, yeah, I'd just like to make a comment about our format. Everyone's bearing with us. We're in the uh, police department training room because of a, a water pipe burst in City Hall. 
So just everyone, if you're not speaking, please be very quiet. We don't, we don't have a microphone room. We only have these conference room speakers. So constantly on. So just please, if you're not speaking, um, just please, uh, please be quiet. And then um, if you are speaking, just try to project. Um, you know, it should catch our zoning commissioners. But if you're at the podium, you've got a microphone behind you and a microphone up here. So. So does it amplify? No, no. It's just, it, it just records. Correct. Okay. This is just kind of for the official recording. And I don't think we, we do have some folks on that. Okay. Lots of chatter on our videos. Don't worry. So, yeah, whenever, and this has been our rules anyways, if you're a member of the public getting up to speak, uh, once we get to the public comments, just say who you are. You know, we are with the name of the applicant or a by resident, member of the public. Uh, just so that that way, our folks that are online know who's speaking. And for the record, that was recorded. Okay. All right. Um, chair recognizes. Uh, well, okay. Normally Matt goes into this, but I will, I'll just remind everybody. Uh, comments are held to four minutes and we request that we don't talk about the wonderful nature of whatever it is that you're trying to promote. Speak to a specific land development code item. So if you come up here and you don't say land development code 502B or C, don't, okay? Come here and tell us what which one of the provisions you're talking about, whether it's traffic or whether it's uh, uh, adverse effect on the neighborhood or whatever it is, address that because we're here to discuss those items, those seven items, and not just generally the merits. We all think this is a wonderful deal, but does it meet the requirements for the special use permit? Okay, so that's the that's that's what I ask you to do. That'll help us in our deliberations. All right, uh, call to order and, and uh, public comments. Do uh, you have cards, Matt, or are we taking them uh, one by one? No cards. There were additional public comments that were uh, made either in open town hall, and uh, there was one dropped off by a resident uh, late this afternoon. There was also an email. Uh, uh, Terry prepared all of those for you. Obviously, you all should have those paper form. And then, uh, since this is the only item on the agenda is the option that's live special use permit. If this, this public comment section number two, item number two is only if someone has a public comment not related to the to the item on the table. So if there's any non yeah. Okay. So I, I believe everyone's here to speak to that. To so that one item, right. All right. Okay. Uh moving on. Uh open the uh, public hearing uh to determine uh, whether we should uh, uh, recommend a special use permit to the city uh, council. Um, so we don't have any cards on that, on this one either, right? No, we don't. We don't have the cards set up, but um, typically we'll do a staff presentation. Uh, you guys, you all can ask us any questions. You can ask questions of the applicant, and then we'll we can open it up to members of the public okay. to speak order against the special. Staff presentation, man. Uh, good evening, commissioners. I'm Barry Restovan, uh, the development services coordinator for Sunset Valley. Um, as you stated, item four today is to conduct public hearing and consider the zoning commission's recommendation for a special use permit for veterinary clinic use uh, within a neighborhood office zoning district for the property located at 4942 West Highway 290. Um, the property is currently used for the environmental plan offices. Um, my understanding is that the borough plan um, will eventually be moving from someplace else that they intend to sell this property to the applicant here today, which is Austin Physical Life. Um, as I said, Austin Physical Life will be using the clinic as a veterinary clinic. Um, what they have told me, and they can elaborate further, uh, the intention is for the property to be used for people who are fostering um, animals prior to adoption, um, that those would be fostered at people's homes. And if while well, they were fostering the um, the dogs and the cats, and this was, um, that they would um, be able to bring them here to the specific clinic to receive veterinary services. So it would be different than kind of a typical vet clinic where you or I would you know, go to for that. 
Uh, this this web clinic will be serving people who lost their animals on behalf of our uh, client. It is a special special part of special use permit within the uh, within the neighborhood office district. Uh, the applicant has stated, I'll get into the code set up this later, that there will not, not be any porting of animals to either inside the facility or on the outside of the facility. Um, the, of course, some animals will be stayed overnight, just like I do not take them to the vet. Sometimes they need to keep them overnight for observation, they may be staying for that. And of course, dogs and dogs, they need to be locked in once a while. And so we need uh, situations where the dogs are being taken out of lock. On the property. Uh, the Sunset Valley City Code actually identifies three different uses of related animals. Um, what is what we're talking about here, which is veterinary clinic, and I'll read the definition real quick. It says, establishment the diagnosis and treatment of disease and injuries to animals by a person trained and authorized to treat animals. Medically, animals may be kept on premise for treatment. Measures. So that's the request here is for that use. And I feel that that means what they pulled in the way that they had to operate. Um, the other use, uh, and I won't read this one because it's much longer, but um, is pet services. And so, generally speaking, it's quite a lengthy definition, but uh, in the beginning, it states it is the use of a site for grooming or boarding services performed within an enclosed building or structure. So, I would look at that as being something along the lines of pet smart or pet show, where they, they maybe they don't have boarding there on site, but they definitely have grooming, they definitely have you know, retail sales of things related to. Uh, um, the, the, the animals, um, or maybe these doggy daycare businesses that you see around now, the, the so called pet hotels and stuff like that. So that would be pet services for visitors, other, other very, other use of uh, Finally, the third type of use is kennel. And simply the, the, the exception there, the difference there is the fact that the dogs may be stored, may be uh, kept outside. And I think that the best example I can put that here by here would be Exmoor down up in Club Brody. Um, mm -hmm. just, uh, just turn it off the counter table. Definitely an outdoor with dogs being kept in cages outside. So, this is the vet service. The vet service, the city code does not allow is a vet clinic use for dogs to be kept outside or, frankly, for that matter, inside, unless it's related to the medical procedure that they are receiving. So, we'll be told warning mammals here, um, um, except those receiving uh, medical attention. Um, the city staff is recommending uh, the approval of the special use permit uh, with two conditions. Let me put those in a moment. Um, going through the criteria of um, A through F within the code, um, um, it talks about the first one discusses compatibility with adjacent residential structures. Um, in this case, there are no adjacent residential structures. However, there is a single family residence on 290 on the French Road, about 200 feet from the East of this property. Um, so compatibility does not apply because it has commercial zoning. One side is the city of Boston, the other side is a, a commercial property. Of the case. Um, whether the proposed use will not have an adverse effect on the value of the front of properties or impede um, their development, um, the, the property has publicly owned land on two sides. The rear of the property you have the development by the city of Southern Valley. Um, to the west, you have the uh, Violet Crow Trail. The local community entrance that um, comes out of the 290 there. Uh, so you only have one adjoining property that is privately owned. As I said, that's the existing office building, so I don't believe it will um, affect that. Uh, the proposed use will not create a use inspect or otherwise interfere in neighbors' enjoyment of their property for business. Again, all the animals will be kept indoors, and so I do not anticipate that we become a nuisance issue uh, for that reason. Uh, the traffic for the proposed use can be reasonably accommodated uh, on existing streets. Why? Specifically, congestion and the safety hazard are parking problems in the area. Along the third piece of point in the neighborhood, again, the animals are being kept inside. So I don't think that's an issue. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Jerry, but but just for, for those to help those out in the audience, the appearance and, and compatibility is A, uh, adverse effect is B, uh, nuisance is C, traffic is D. And Jerry, if you just kind of lay out E and F, that way those wanting to make comments will have. We'll know which which bucket their comments fit into. Letter E 
that the proposed use complies with all other applicable provisions of this code and other ordinances and regulations. Um, no new construction is proposed with this site. I think it's important to note that with the 40 today is a special use permit, not a site plan, not a, site not a zoning change. So, really, the question at hand is is this an appropriate location for a veterinary clinic? Um, there is, of course, an existing, I think it's a former house where Enviroplant has their offices. And Enviroplant is currently under construction building a new building uh, that's adjacent to the, uh, the house where Enviroplant is. Um, that building is not yet finished. Um, and uh, when the property changes hands, provided the perfect proof, um, that building eventually will be finished before that time and uh, will also be used for. Uh, by Austin Pets Live. I think what they have building us is beginning to do that Austin Pets Live also plans to use this besides this other area, but they will have the offices for the uh, the other. Uh, they've also told me that they intend um, occasionally to use it for a fundraising for a activity. Um, if they wanted to um, um, you know, take over for you know, some sort of fundraiser. Uh, and they did indicate to me that they would do that if they would be probably renting parking space from a nearby property owner and then um, shoveling people by May to the side of this large place. Uh, so, our David has spoken to the church, he's told that he's done 90, and I think that there's also a history of specs. Um, um, Specs. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 the Lutherans and, and Spence. Yeah. Yeah. Lutheran yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Lutheran Church. So, so again, so, so you know, fundraising occurs in office, you know, in office place, um, is the issue of the department. So, I do believe it will comply with um, all its regulations as required to. Um, so, folks have asked me, well, what happens when they do start? Keeping animals outside. So what happens if it's just two changes? And um, what would happen is that they would receive a zoning violation, we call it right back, a notice of a violation. And if they correct the situation within a reasonable amount of time, either by stopping doing what they're doing or coming and asking for permission from them, from y'all, for an additional yeah. uh, permit, they would be subject to a $60,000 fine for So we have to go to the district court, et cetera, et cetera. So you cannot say you get a permit for one thing and then start doing you know, a different use. So the building that's under construction will be finished. The existing house that uses the office uh, will remain. There are 26 spaces on the site, and there's, like I said, no new construction activity planned other than interior remodel of both probably the new building as well as, of course, the existing uh, office building to serve the uh, the venues to create the exam rooms or whatever other they need. Um, and then finally, letter F says that the uh, special use will be operated by the owner or lessee of the approved property on which a special use is located or by another pursuant to written agreement that does such, such a way. <laughs> My understanding from that is that the uh, facility will be operated by hospitals. Why, of course, who will be purchasing the property uh, when the uh, contract is contemplated, which uh, most contracts require that you get the appropriate permits from the city that you need. Before you close on the property. And so um, right now they have a contract to purchase and they're waiting to see for the city to grant the permit to this contract. Yes, yes. So Gary has uh, Gary Payne owns the Merrill plan and he has signed what we call the agency letter. Saying that technically he is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because he owns the property. Uh, but he signed the letter saying Austin Pets Live is allowed to act um, to go seek this permit on my property if they have that. Um, so with that, I'm available for questions. Well, you did have a recommendation. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 um, you know, we are recommending approval. Um, however, um, we think that two additional conditions should be placed on the property. Um, one is to fence the entirety of the rear of the property. Um, I did go visit the property, and um, and I told them that, as I said, the gray belt is behind it. By the crowd is on one side. And uh, you know, I was talking to Gary out there, you know, there's quite a few people that, that, that walk that trail and um, they often have off leash dogs. And so I anticipate here that occasionally you know some of the volunteers in the fly or the fence, maybe take their dog outside for a walk, you know what I mean? And there's possibly little trail dogs, free range dogs, 
who may be passing by as well. And so they kind of keep the, the ducks from the vet, if you will, even though they're the evolution that just went around, but keep them kind of separated from the, oh. the trail dogs. I think a fence would be appropriate. And uh, the outcome in this case, yes. if they're there for medical attention, they may be vulnerable. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we want to keep them, want to keep them safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then plus the security. So, I mean, yeah. they, they, you're going to be investing a lot of money in the property to make money and they like to have the rear secure. And finally, like a second condition, and uh, I suppose that the outcome may reduce as well. And that is that, um, um, that the, the, the property owner will lack animal waste on the property at least once an hour. Um, I think that they would probably need to do that anyway, but I'm not going to go ahead and uh, suggest that as a condition. Um, because as I said, the problem will be you know, somehow the walking the dogs, and it is adjacent to the green belt, it is the environmental system area, and so we wouldn't want you know, a large group of dog things sitting out there all the time. So, uh, the court today is just a minimum of stuff. I'll wait for my fellow commissioners on that, but I do have a real quick question for the applicant who's representing the applicant. Uh, on conditions one and two, the fence and the waste mitigation. Do you agree, not agree, have any objections? Okay, okay. Thank you, Jerry, thank you. I also have a question about the fence. Uh, is a six foot fence able to keep back a dog who is known to be an escape artist? Um, well, so the dogs that would be on our property would be on the leash and probably injured or ill in some way, so they wouldn't be at any risk. The dogs on the trail, I I haven't experienced dogs that are just trying to jump a giant fence to get into a property. It's usually um, like a dog separation anxiety is usually trying to escape the property rather than injure them. So I think it would be okay. Would you ever have a female dog in heat? Potentially. Would that maybe cause a dog to scale your six foot fence? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but she would not be outside. Okay. So she would not, um, they would have to smell her through the building. Okay. Which I don't know if it's possible, but. So there's a way for dogs to use the bathroom inside the building. Forgive me, I'm a little ignorant. No, no, it's okay. okay. Um, the dogs that are that would be hospitalized there or there for the day would be dropped off by the foster <clears throat> would be walked on a leash outside so the bathroom is capable of that. If they have any kind of pages to keep, then they would not be allowed to walk outside. They would have to stay in inside, and that loop would be pushed. I see. Um, Matt, would is is it picking up her voice sitting here or she, uh, would she be? I believe it was a question about who, maybe a commissioner. So that was Commissioner Versace asking that the fence was high enough and who's speaking now is uh, the applicant. The applicant is Ellen Jeffries, right? Jefferson. Jefferson. Okay. Just for those listening in. No, I mean, should, oh, yeah, should she be at the yeah, podium? Yeah, sorry, yeah. But, and, yeah, if, if you have more questions for the applicant, Ellen, if you could stand. Okay. Okay. Any, I have, you have further questions? Yeah, simple okay. question. Step up there, please. Well, <laughs> sorry to make you get up. It's a fairly simple question. Can you describe the organization? Is it a final one c three organization? Who are the board members? How is, you know, give me an idea of your activities, how much veterinary involvement there is, oversight, et cetera. And, 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 the future. Absolutely. And I, I, I uh, this is Alan Jefferson, I'm the president and CEO of Oxford Pets Lag and I'm a veterinarian. And um, our organization, without going into our whole history, we have been around for 25 years and um, we have a board of directors. Three of our board members are here tonight um, Matt, Rusty, and Ian. And um, our board is about 15 people. And uh, we have currently have five veterinarians on staff and a medical director who oversees all of our veterinary uh, work. So one of the main differentiators of our organization from um, quote unquote regular animal shelters is that we have a, uh, the way that we're solving for unnecessary euthanasia at shelters is by honing in on the problems that are landing them on euthanasia lists. And the majority of problems that are landing them on euthanasia lists are medical. 
And so our team has been built up around trying to create that infrastructure where animals that are in shelters scheduled to die, much less get the treatment that they need to keep across their homes and leave. And some of them pass away, but it's less than 10%. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. I'm just curious as to it. That sounds like you do borders to some pets someplace. Is that not true? So we currently it's part of your organization. So the organization has multiple components. We have a behavior center for dogs, and that is we just purchased a property over by the airport and um, on Burlington Road near Burlington Road that uh, will house our behavior rehabilitation center. The property we're on currently is the Town Lake Animal Center over on the city, um, city of Austin site at Cooper Chavez. And uh, we are planning to keep that. Um, we're working with the city on a 75 year lease. And the, currently, that is where animals that are regular don't need medical care, don't need behavioral support, are housed. And um, if we see that as the property is demolished and rebuilt, we see that continuing as a small adoption center and um, what we call sort of easy foster care, medical foster care, and it's kind of like a foster service center. And this is really about specialty medicine and doing specialty surgeries. We do a lot of orthopedic surgeries, a lot of um, soft tissue surgeries. We treat a lot of contagious diseases. We do have um, kind of have the whole banner. So when we sent the flyer out, the, the picture of Central Texas Veterinary Specialty Hospital, um, that's similar to what we do, but not for the public. So we're really seeing kind of full-time lots and lots of animals that have uh, injuries. And so the, um, to, to fully answer your question, 80% of our animals are in foster homes. And the, um, the animals that would be at this facility overnight will have 24 seven um, uh, care. So they'll be cared for overnight and, um, and they would be undergoing treatment. So uh, the best way I can describe it is that there's no hotel. It's only a hospital. That would be there. There's nobody that's living there, just sit there and rest. So. Very good, very helpful. Thank you. How do we do this? Is it? Go ahead. The chair okay. recognizes you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions that came to light when you were explaining. You said you had 10% of the animals under your care pass away. What is the protocol for disposing of the bodies? We work with, um, I'm trying to remember the name, I think they just changed their name, but it's one of the cremation services in town and they come and pick up the bodies as well and um, bring them and have them cremated. And if the foster wants their ashes back, then we um, will work with them to uh, get a special discount from that there where they can get the uh, offering and a special kind of storage that might be recommended to you that's maybe state regulated that you're gonna have on site for that? I don't know if it's state regulated, but all veterinary hospitals have the equivalent of like a hunting fridge freezer. So they like a, a vertical horizontal sorry, freezer. And so they, we have have those and they would have very cool storage. And then um, you had mentioned um, the current facility at Town Lake does not have the medical staff there and it's not being used as a medical board per se. Um, is Are there sick animals there as well right now? Yeah, so we are currently operating all of our services out of the Town Lake Animal Center, virtually all of them. We have a small space at in Terrytown for adoption and for our neo, kitten neonatal care, which is another one of our specialty services. And the um, the facility is 75 years old plus. We've been in negotiations for over 10 years to try to get the, the site redeveloped, um, torn down and redeveloped and resolve support of the problems um, there with power lines and under like 72 inch water pipes under the property. And it's just turned into an extremely complicated process, which has delayed our, our future. And so now we're at the place at the point where, where we just like to buy other properties and move on and um, still and just comply with all of the restrictions that are on that property for the 75 years. So instead of having our full facility there, it'll be a fraction of what we currently have. To do. So how many animals are currently under medical care at that facility? So this morning when I was talking to our veterinarians, we have about 20 kittens that are being treated for candidacemia and about 20 puppies being treated for carbovirus. 
there in the facility and about four dogs that are being treated for distemper. And there were three animals in hospitalized patients um, recovering from surgery or receiving oxygen therapy. And how many animals do you expect to be able to house at this new location? Um, that's a good question. We haven't gotten that far. We're, we are currently um, trying to map out how we would set up the cargo ward in particular. We're really trying to space out the dogs so that they're not all kind of in one space together because they can spread other diseases to each other by accident. Um, so the the new building would be where that's currently where we're thinking that we would put the cargo ward um, on the first floor and we're trying to build out the cage space so that they're not all. So I, I can't, I'm not really sure how to answer that. We have the capacity to house up to 50 animals in the cargo ward that we're currently in. So it's not the greatest setup. And um, with cats in particular, we try to push them to foster even while they're sick because they're just so much better to be able to keep enforced feeding at least to try. So it sounds like you're expanding your operation to have a off-site training facility for dogs who might be having, I don't know. Mental health challenges. Okay. <laughs> um, and that's acreage, big acreage out near the airport. Yeah, um, and so that's going to have its own kennels and a capacity there. Then you're going to have your downtown facility, and that's going to have its own kennels and capacity there. And then this is meant to service all locations as a satellite office for all locations for all the dogs who might be sick in those very in those various facility facilities as well as the homes. Um, only for the foster the homes. Program. So the, the the concept of foster service centers would be um, one would be at the Town Lake Animal Center, uh, potentially more in the future. You know, we'll, we'll have to get through this capital campaign first, but um, the idea is that in every quadrant we have foster service centers so that we can build bigger foster base and help more animals and also provide more convenient centralized care for them. So that would be like the same year vaccines um, coming in and getting quick heart run tests um, uh, or fewer nurse would be in these foster service centers and um, in picking up crates, that kind of thing. This would be those orthopedic surgeries and you know, the big, bigger problems. If, if I may, Dr. Trevorson, so it sounds like the foster centers are your primary care physician. This would be the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So your run of the mill medical will be handled elsewhere. Okay. I'm sorry. See. Makes sense. Okay. Um, okay. So the tough cases that would be here in Sunset Valley would be the extreme cases, like the highly contagious diseases, like parvo, and how might I understand the how that relates to cleaning the site daily? Yes, yeah, so parvo virus is spread through feces, and it is a disease that only affects dogs that are not vaccinated or not completely vaccinated. Puppy ones that are not talking about that, but the um, that is why it's completely enclosed, and so they um, we flush all the uh, we wash all, all the bedding in the ward itself. Um, anything that enters Parvo has to stay in Parvo. The people that go in have to change all of their clothes, wear crocs, um, they keep all their street clothes out of the hospital. When they come out, they're washing their arms um, to make sure that there's no contamination and changing into their street clothes when they're leaving. As puppies are exiting the big test negative, they go through a double bath process where they are bathed from head to toe, their toenails are clipped. So if there's anything in their toenails um, to get it out and scrub it out. And um, and then they, they go to the foster home or to the nursing home. Um, I guess the leash only, which was mentioned by both Jerry and also, is that a part of your presentation is that your stating that the dogs at your facility will always be on a leash. Okay. Has that been incorporated into our city comments and recommendations? Or so, so chapter 94, which is outside of the zoning chapter, uh, which is the plan development code, is, is the valley's code for dealing with animals. Right. And yeah, so if there was ever, you know, a, a, a situation where there was a nuisance, this would be 
um, and it was cited through our public safety officers through Chapter 94. Um, they would keep all would have to comply with yeah. Chapter 94, which is um, you know, again, it's about as regulations relating to animals. A lot of the registration, or excuse me, a lot of the regulations in Chapter 94 is more dealing with like, residential, which is like residential pet registration, uh, sure. livestock, other you know, prohibited livestock. So it's it's geared more towards uh, you know residential, but the uh, they, they would you would all have to follow what's in Chapter 94. So we would, you know we would give this to you as you know it's just you can't have uh, you can't have dogs off the leash. Dogs can't cause a nuisance, or animal, animals can't cause a nuisance, or just attack someone. So I they would have to abide by the, those regulations within Chapter 9. And the uh, game screen belt that's directly behind the conservation Store. zone, is that an off leash area or is that leash only? Technically, it is it, enforceable. Leash is now just a very small part of the city. It is off leash, and I do not believe the game's. It's just directly behind City Hall, and that's it, right? Okay. And, um, Commercial areas, which they, this is a uh, commercial area, parks, conservation areas, green spaces, with the exception of number one sunset trail, number 10 sunset trail, and the 35.26 acres known as the Villas of Home Sunset Valley Homestead. Uh, uh, competent voice control is not considered to be sufficient to control dogs, must remain on handheld nature of uh, the areas. So um, and, and that property being a commercial property and then Game three belt all back in there. It's, it's uh, dogs are supposed to be on the The dogs on the trail, that's their responsibility, but the dogs at the facility, if they're outside, then they can be on the leash. And will there be dogs that have heartworm at your facility? Heartworms, but we treat so much heartworms that it's kind of considered a minor illness at okay. this point. So probably those would be treated at the foster service centers if they have a severe case of heartworms where they um, are in heart failure or have another one of the complications that are life threatening, then they can be kept. Yeah, so the reason that I ask is because I care about all animals, not just you know dogs and cats, and I just want to make sure that there aren't any contagious diseases that might spread into our protected conservate our very precious very few acres are protected in this metro austin area we have to be so careful to not we have coyotes and fox and and all kinds of wildlife that is like very concentrated back in there and i worry about like anything spreading so we do too that, that's absolutely our talk in terms of flushing all the food and feeding it the um, at the town Lake center we have a family of raccoons that live all, all sorts of animals that live in the facility because it has holes all over it but um they they're fine but we don't we don't have any cross contamination and if we have so much laundry in the ward we pay for it to be incinerated through a pest and pieces prayer and then do you have something that's like akin to i visited um animal facilities like concentrated food feeding operations, and they have these basically mats at each door, and you wipe your feet on the mat, and it clean the chemicals on the mat clean the bottom of your shoes before you exit, so you're not bringing it into the environment outside. Is that something like the practice that y'all do? We do, we do. It's been um, there's research now that's saying that that's probably not as effective as just making sure you're not stepping in anything, and um, and so but we do because it's a good reminder for staff to know that when you're crossing a barrier that you should be aware of your surroundings. So we typically, instead of the mats, we're using a spray and have everybody spray their shoes as they're coming through. But in the ward, they can't even wear their shoes. So the contagious part of the facility is, um, it has its own entrance, but it's not, it's not crossing the animal coming in for surgery. It's not, it's, it's kind of its own role. Got it. All sounds great. Much like that, you're teaching hospitals how the isolation works the back of, uh, of the training centers. Would anyone be living on the site to take care of these animals? No, but we will have overnight techs. We, we currently have 24 7 um, support for the hospital, and that would be great. Is there 
be like an overnight nurse as opposed to like a residence. Yes. Yeah. Right, and to be somebody on shift. Right, because I someone said there's a house there, and I was thinking, oh, well, the doctor might live in the house, and then you know, no. that'd be convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Too much need for space. Okay, got it. And we don't want to be somebody's employer and their landlord. Kind <laughs> of a hard situation. Okay, well, you answered all my questions. Thank you. Chairman, I think she just yielded the floor. So um, I think this. Sorry, have you yielded? <laughs> I yes. yielded okay. the floor. <laughs> Hello, Chair. Uh, I've, Dr. Jefferson, I've got a, a question, or I'd like to have a discussion with you and Jerry and Matt, if, if you will. Uh, I'm going to preface this by pointing out that I like children. Uh, I've got children. Uh, I've served on a private school board here to, uh, for a local private school. I've done a number of different charitable organizations with children. And I uh, was on the Austin, Austin Adoption Day Committee as a, as a volunteer lawyer and things. But when we had a child care center come looking for space here, I wanted to see a traffic study. Not because I don't like children, but because we, for the last 10, 15 years or something, Bob, we've been here for 20, Bob and I was there for 20 years on the commission. We've always asked for a traffic study. Was there a traffic study done in this location? Uh, did we, did we no, get one? No, no, not a traffic study done as part of it. Okay. So, again, don't get me wrong. It's nothing against Pets Alive. It's just something that I normally look at because that's a very congested area, especially around the holiday season when you get queuing from Brody back well past the entrance to that neighborhood. Um, but it sounds like you've got a limited number of trips. You don't generate a lot of trips per day. Is that correct? Yes. Um, staff, have you looked into that at all? Or? No, we haven't. I could you look into the yep. scripture manual mm -hmm. uh, for a website that would give you a number of the fixed cost per foot. Um, usually, the idea there, if you're on the first year, especially if you're here, is a discretionary for that. You might be seeing some cost or something. Usually with that report, okay, let's see existing traffic, let's see the post traffic, add the two together, analyze it, and what we need to mitigate. Um, in this case, I don't know too much you know, that's running for it, you know, but it gets additional traffic. We can't because um, it's textile. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also be somewhat concerned about, well, let's say generally speaking, things are modeled here. It's somewhat different than what the true generation may have said to us. The true generation may have said to a public event study. This this is a limited community, limited availability. Right. Clinic, I think right? it would, it would yeah. So I, I I agree with Jerry, the that it's probably okay. What concerns me is the occasional fundraiser. How occasional is occasional, and what do you mean by fundraiser? And how many people will be there? What time of year? What time of year exactly? What time of day? Yes, because that's property beautiful and the state that it is in that city for uh, maybe a donor event um, or some place to bring people together. I don't know if that would be an actual, and, and I don't know if it's possible for one of our board members to come up to. Um, Certainly, you don't have to do this yourself. You can, you know, uh, I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I said, th this is, don't, don't see this as a cross-examination. It's, it's a discussion. So whoever you need to bring up. Please bring him up. Uh, Matt Harris, uh, co-chair of Austin Public Law. Specifically, to answer your question, right now it's a little difficult to think. I think the primary goal, at least in the near term, is to move the hospital operations that are currently in my over there and make them set up and work. It is a beautiful site. Um, and we would probably bring donors there more on one on one basis because to, to raise the kind of dollars that they have to raise to purchase the site and then to move it to do it to make a more functional hospital site. But it would be much more, much more of a one on one basis. As Dr. Jefferson said, we've never really had an opportunity to have a site like this up to this point. Uh, I would suspect that as we do, uh, as we start to raise do more fundraising for this location and for the college, we would probably have events. Not even necessarily at the site. We'll probably have them at, you know, 
if you're really more brain going around there and saying, okay, we just we're going to rehabilitate, turn this building into a hospital, we just want to put the name on it. For, for just just for clarification, you said for D Collins. What's a D Collins? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> property on emergency. Okay, thank you. For 15 acres. Okay. And, and again, that one's also going uh, right. to the site development permit for the city of Washington. So, okay. a lot of the on site stuff is going to be much more one on one, not a big crew type deal. Barbecue in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very. It's our just tent, hundreds of people. Uh, I, I don't see that. I mean, just, just because somebody's dead, you got a limited parking on the side, so you're going to have to shovel people there. And in some ways, it just doesn't work. It, it's really much more about reaching out to that donor who wants to have a significant gift, put their name on something, and you know, yeah. be much more one on one and just having the same conversation we're having each night. We would have with them in terms of what, the, what this is going to be, what we need. Uh, again, having a lot of experience in nonprofits, um, from school boards to scouts to other things, I understand the role of your, your development director and your development officers. I don't want to get in their way. But by the same token, we have to go through these criteria. Um, so I want to raise an, a, a potential solution that'll get me past all this, at least myself. Uh, we have a temporary special use mechanism in the state, in the, in the ordinances. And the temporary special use mechanism is an event or an activity with a duration of less than 30 days in a, in a zoning district other than single family that involves an activity not normally associated with the CEO certificate of occupancy uh, or zoning use for the proposed location. So in this case, you're, you're a medical facility, veterinary specifically. So if you want to do something that's outside of that, like have a get together, you'd come in for a temporary special use permit. We'd look at it, determine that you've got parking agreements with specs or the, I think it's Holy Cross, Holy Cross Lutheran Church. Um, and you've worked everything out. You come to us, we look at it and say, good. And then we don't have to do traffic studies from the beginning. They go to council. They, they go to council. They go to council. Go to council. Well, I meant they come to the city. Yeah, come, come to the city, make an application. It's not as stringent as a special use as a special use permit application. Because it's temporary. It's temporary, but it does uh, require council approval. So you just have to. Uh, what I always say with temporary special use applicants, just work on your time. You know, you're having an event come up, contact the city. But I would say that that would be a very good, uh, I believe, uh, method of uh, of the city uh, basically. Having some, again, on the on, on yeah. when you all do want to have a this, it helps the city know okay, well, how much traffic are you expecting? You know, do we need to look at you know transportation plan? We, 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 we've uh, we've issued temporary special use permits for all types of events at Burger, they've had pet adoption events at the shop at you know, the shopping centers, and uh, you know, Home Depot every year gets one for a pre sale. So, you might be able to shuttle from here <laughs> yeah. from City Hall, yeah. so but but. Or that rent city, hall. rent city hall, but that brings us back around to Dr. Jefferson and Mr. Harris. Is that something that you would object to, squawk about, to, uh, throw a riot, uh, have a protest, or is that something that's amenable to y'all to get around having to do the traffic study? I think I, I think we would be very amenable to that. Um, my I guess the question I would have is what would trigger that? Is there a certain number of people? Like if we were to have a staff gathering of all the people that work there for seven day a week, 24 hour operation, and there'd be more people at it, like a staff appreciation event, then currently we work in there. I, I, would, I would think anything that anything that fills your 26 spaces. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> fill the work or uh, exceeds, exceeds, exceeds. Right, yeah. And also, you know, when we hear fundraiser event, you know, event, if it's a, if it's a office party, Right. If it's if it's something that would just would be a part of normal, you know, staff, we're going to have the staff get together, you know, because you had the office space as well at the clinic. But yeah, I would say if it's an event, fundraising event, or, you know, yeah, any any kind of event that's outside the scope of both the office, which you know, the office use, which is built into the zoning, and then the special use, potentially the veteran. And again, my focus, his, he's looking at the use, I'm looking at the vehicular traffic, 
And as long as you can park everybody safely off site, if they have to sit there for three hours waiting for people to come out because traffic is queued at holiday, uh, during the holiday season and everyone's going to spec in the shop, specs in the shopping center, well, that's at least off the roadway. You know, that's them. Um, so that, that would be my criteria, but it's. To answer the question, yeah. we're going to do and, and decide I'm I'm going to add that to the fence and the animal waste uh, mitigation as as a third uh, condition, if you will, that that you'll come in for a temporary special use permit for fundraising events. Yeah, and the city of Austin with the um, town and animal center, we have a provision in there that we are authorized to do fundraising activities, and that. Plus, we've never had a fundraising event there. Um, I don't know if there, I don't want to squash the ability to bring donors to talk, you know, just uh, on a different diet, because that's not a medical thing. Maybe that would be very administrative. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, just based on the number of parking figure, two per car. And again, I don't know how many employees or people you plan to have on a facility at the time, but what if it's any kind of event where there's going to be 50 or more people on site, or we plan to have 50 or more people on site. I think they're already coming in 40, so day to day, that would be an issue. Plus, plus one. It is an office. <laughs> it is an office. Yeah. Where it means that we'll have donors over and talk about the benefit of the benefit of the office. We're just looking at you know, the days of work. Yeah, you're going to exceed the parking lot capacity, basically. Um, you know, the city can know about it to make sure that you have a how many employees do you have? Overall, we have 250. There would be at this, there would be, oh, no. well, I mean, there would be, there would be, uh, <laughs> just, well, not now. Um, we would probably have um, three or four veterinarians that are working there throughout the week. Um, each of them have four technicians assigned to them. So, uh, you know, on some days they might all be there just because there's usually a day they all come up so they can do rounds and meetings and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I, can, I can get you a, a real number. We were, we were looking to ballpark it so that we could look at Jerry's suggestion. Uh, so you could conceivably have everybody from that office plus a few folks from administration. And if they rode with somebody, That'd be 50, but you, but you could park, you could still park them. Okay. And then if you can't just come up with a plan with one of your neighbors and let us know what you plan on. Let city council, when I say us, I'm talking about Sunset Valley. Let the city know what you're planning on doing. Okay. I said this, are we staff okay? The applicant okay? Uh, fellow council members, commission members. Okay. Um, so that's, you're adding to... Uh, uh, Additional bullet points. I'm adding this additional adding bullet point to, to, to Jerry's. Right. Yeah. Especially, traffic uh, study. Well, no, no. no. In no. lieu of the traffic study, they're going to have to come in for a temporary special use permit. When they, oh, I see. Okay. For fundraising okay. events. Traffic study. Right. Okay. In lieu of. Right. Or, or events of over 50 people. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have staff, we have applicant, we have public comments now. Before you no make comments, a, right, I'm not. I'm not planning to make a motion yet. I'm just making sure that we're all on the same page. All right. All right. Um, welcome. To sit down, but be uh, on call when you have come up with further questions. All right. Uh, are there any uh, public comments on this particular issue? And and please make it to the zoning recommendations. Yes, sir. Uh, Charles Young, 46 Street Strive. Um, I have a little bit of confusion here. It's coming because I'm just a little confused by what I heard. And Sherry, you can probably clear this up. Um, I thought the application was for veterinary services for fosters of APA. And then I thought I heard that this is going to be a hospital for any of the dogs that you have at APA. So, Am I just confused, or is the is one of those two correct? Do you want to go first? 
Uh, I'm yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid the, the yeah. sound pickup is. I'm asking this question just for clarity before we close the comments. Um, you want me to go there? Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Jennifer, you So you're not incorrect. The uh, any animal that is being treated for a medical condition that comes directly to us. So we serve it across the region. We serve as um, that that uh, intervention in euthanasia. And part of our program in part of those 250 employees is teaching other shelters how to build their own vet clinics and how to do their own work so that we're not having to take in something. I mean, we can't take all the animals, so we have to say no every day. But we um, we serve as an emergency hospital for the city of Austin and for many shelters in our region where they call us and say, you have one hour to get this animal and or we're gonna euthanize it. And so we have a whole transport volunteer team that goes and picks up animals all over the place. They bring them to the hospital. Um, at the same time, our foster team is coordinating a new foster home for that or a foster home for that animal. And so like all the cargo puppies that come in as they're being treated, we're constantly cleaning as soon as they look like they're gonna live, we're cleaning them out and saying, who's gonna be ready to pick this one up as soon as it tests negative. So they, um, they're not being directly adopted from there. They might not have had a foster yet, but they will get a foster before they get adopted. Or they'll go to another facility. For some reason, we're not able to find a foster. But we're actually trying to increase our foster capacity from 80% to 90% because kennels are a terrible place for animals. So one more thing I'd like to add to this, and, and, and it's a question for Jerry. Okay, follow up. Which is is the language of what is being proposed here accurate in terms of what we just stated that, that this is going to be a, a yes okay. I think it'd be a specific definition of veterinary clinic okay yes. okay thank you I had a question for Mr Young certainly yes perhaps I'm 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 being a bit dense <laughs> I can't figure out what the why the why the clarification would make that much of a difference? I mean, I understand the difference between the two, but to me, they. I mean, it sounds like it's a veterinary services, whether it's a clinic or a hospital. Right. No, I agree. So, with that. I just wanted the clarity of exactly what is the facility going to be used for. Okay, I thought it first stated to me that this is for a veterinary clinic for fosters, right? Which is not the case. Not the case, right? Just so we have a clear understanding of what the facilities can be used for. That's all I was looking for. Okay. I thought I was missing something. Sorry, sir. Can I clarify? Yes. Please. That would be great. Um, uh, so the only people that would be bringing animals in for surgeries would be the fosters, unless they're coming directly from the shelter and then going to the foster at the, at, you know, back to the person. Does that, does that help? So the fosters are the only people that would be accessing the clinic. And to me, those are sadly those both of those are fall under veterinary services. Both, both of those situations fall under veterinary. Services. Sure. And we do have some occasional uh, adopters who have taken a, a, an extremely difficult case, and we will continue to treat them. They're still they're still typically owned by us, but they're in the adopter's care, and then as soon as they're stable, kind of once they can go to their own vet. I have a question regarding, I, I know there's more public comments, but to piggyback, um, so the clinic will be servicing both the Town Lake, the Fosters, and the 15-acre Burleson Ranch with difficult surgery cases or difficult medical cases. And is that something that we need to amend in terms of specificity when we present to city council so that I mean, that's why you asked the question, I assume. I think, Mr. Chair, the, the, the question before the commission the council is, is this an appropriate use for this site? There's a lot of this other category that has the traditional staff, the special use permit, which requires the objective of the council. And so, you know, they may decide if it's an appropriate place for this or it's not. Um, but getting down to the level of detail of you know, kind of the dog from here or the dog from there. Um, it's still a very clinic use, and, and we do have to keep in mind, of course, the, the ability of the city to enforce conditions as well. Absolutely. 
Yeah, maybe Harvard would say this, you know, or the you know, really thought it'd be a good deal with there. Uh, but, you know, we don't have to rely on the outcome to tell us uh, how many kind of use facilities that are more concerned is better. Absolutely. So this committee would be concerned with how many parking spaces versus employees. Does it meet the criteria for that? Does it meet the criteria for the actual lot being not in a floodplain for some reason? If they were going to wait, wash the waste into the creek or something along Actually, those that's, lines. that's more along the lines of site plan. But yes, we'd, we'd consider that in, as part of the, the A through F. Got it. If it's an A through F, we would answer. So in terms of the employees, you mentioned you had 250 employees, but there were only going to be about eight staff members on site every day. Is that, or are you going to have an office as well? So how many employees total on the site? I didn't count them up before coming here, but um, I'm guessing that this has 10 to 15 um, administrators or foster coordinators. Um, we, our foster coordinators work remotely. Since most of the animals are placed in our medical, um, where there can be a real synergy with them being on site so they can get their own photos and bios real quick and send them out over email. <clears throat> the medical staff is probably going to be 10 to 15 also on any given day. So we'll probably fill all those 26 spaces. Um, but they're not all there at the same time because the clinic, our clinic opens at 6 a.m. and closes at 8. So there's a morning closing more than 6 to 8. Got it. I was just going to add a couple of thoughts on Rusty Tally, and I'm former chairman of the board, and I'm still a board member. But um, the, the the fact that we spread out to potentially three locations is more just meeting we're up or run with. We're not having room to do what we need to do correctly. So it's not like we're adding a whole lot more animals or a whole lot more people, we're going to be adding some, but not that are going to be interacting <laughs> with this clinic, because even when we're bringing, say, dogs from our 15-acre area, it's going to be internal people with a van that go get them and bring them in. It's not going to be like a regular vet clinic where every dog or cat that comes in is a car because it's a separate owner. So don't, don't think in terms of where the dogs come from as adding significant amounts of parking issues or, or whatever, because it's all employees doing the work. So I just want to kind of clarify on that. Sure. Thank you. Can't wait. Come on, Kurt. Just ask a simple question. So the question is, is uh, there's, we have a defined veterinary clinic. Is there a difference between a veterinary clinic and a hospital? I don't know, legally. I mean, not in the veterinary Maybe that's for Jerry. To, is there a difference between a veterinary clinic and a veterinary hospital? Not in our time. Answer my question. Thank you. Actually, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I have a few questions familiar with it. Um, so here's my concern about the property, which I just don't understand. Um, it's the density, right? That, that, that's, I think, one of the, what, what some of the questions might be getting to is how many critters are on site. And I am experienced with that. And, it, it, and to me, that makes a difference, you know, because Mrs. Angel Lee is a couple of worse day on, and maybe she's not coming, but I, I want to know how much potential dogs are on site. I mean, the cat plus the owner, the dogs, that, that, that's an impact as to whether I think it's a good use for this property. Just how many? And then um, the environmental concerns about the waste, I, I, I like what I heard. I, I have concerns about that. Um, I, I, I do want to make sure that we don't have waste going into the green belt. Um, that's always been a concern on that property. Um, and how enforceable all that is, you know, because when we have other people, I, I like that I'm hearing that staff is coming uh, instead of people, because if you go to Pet Smart, you see all the waste from other people who are doing it, who are potentially fosters. And so I think that's where your concern is if it's not staff and it's fosters dropping off and that's the waste. That, that's 
And as you can see, just go down to that part, you can go see that in the south, that part of the problem is the south green stuff. It's the people coming in that you that used to the problem. All you gotta do is go down and look. Um, and I think that's that's most of my concerns. It, it really is um, thinking about an ideal woman there and thinking about a whole lot of dogs. I think there's a lot of noise. That's that's my main concern because I think they've mostly addressed my other concerns. And so um, I think that it matters. And, and, and I don't know that there's anything in the code that says that. So you have to have, I mean, it's kind of like the car plan. There's no other yeah. that addresses that. Chairman Skews. There's so many that are going to under practice state law that regulates, you know, size per animal at a vet clinic, but there's nothing to see. Okay. I, I believe we did encounter something like that when we were, what was it, 15 years ago when the pet hotel was coming in, that there's a certain, there is regulations dealing with how many animals per square feet in a certain facility. I don't understand what he and and they, would, they would still apply, even though we don't, Sunset Valley does not have an ordinance, they would still have to comply. One of the criteria is that they meet all of the laws and regulations, right? Yes. So that, that might help. Um, as far as enforcement, I say that the environmental committee just patrol the fence, walk along it, you know, <laughs> scoop up any poop. That's, that's my. Anybody here from the environmental? No. Okay, so then it, that passes. <laughs> no, no, no objection. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Real quick, commissioners, um, what would y'all think of, and what staff would y'all think of looking into that before it goes to council? Looking into whether state state, state, regulations? state regulations, whether there's anything on can, on density, just to we can look into that. and then inform. We're not going to put. We're not going to write anything yeah, the, right. into the special into the special use permit. But it would be good for for the council to have that information. And council considers it. Hopefully, we get that. We also post it down the back. It's on Thursday and a lot of other stuff to write. Okay. So, we might just have to present that at the meeting. We might have to go in the back. Right. Um, we can have that ready for the meeting. And also, I guess I have a question because the veterinary clinic, as I understand, so there's like phase one environment, plan, which is the existing house, and there's the new building. Building being built kind of has is almost designed for two spaces. Is that the entire? Building going to be used for the clinic, or just or oh, I mean, there's yeah, because uh, we'll just need to know because I'm sure there's some sort of square foot, you know, how many yeah. dogs can be, you know, per square feet. And so we have the dimension of that building. So just yeah, if you can just kind of elaborate. On... I, I'm not aware of a state law um, around veterinary hospital okay. usage. Sure. Um, Katie's our our policy director, so she may know she works for the state mostly. Right. Um. But I can say that um, the there will be a caretaker, a, quite a, a building caretaker that will be employed. So we will be keeping the, the site clean. There won't be um, trash and that kind of thing. It's really important to us as we're leaving a facility that um, sort of invites, because it's in such bad condition, it invites the exact bad condition. And so we're really going to nip that in the bud and have somebody that's there, the, the ground keeper. Um, the uh, the other thing with the paneling is that the, um, the it's hard because when you have puppies and kittens, you have a um, you can have a bit litter taking up the one one um, hospital page and still not be over capacity, but have a large number of animals in your care. And so Parvo in particular really is to be mostly a puppy, and so we do tend to get litters, and so you might have. You know, a couple dozen dogs in there, but it's still puppies. 
and um, the uh, I, I think the only jobs that would be housed there that are adults, and we get the occasional adult in Fargo as well, but um, we would be seeing like overnight after an orthopedic surgery. So we might have a dog from our, our behavior facility that's blown out and has ACLs. else. He'll come in to get surgery with the orthopedic surgeon, stay at the hospital overnight, and then go back either to the facility or to the foster home. Um, I think at the Town Lake facility, even with all the holes, I've never heard the puppies in the Fargo ward outside. You can hear, of course, the kennels and all the dogs that are in the outside kennels, but I've never heard the animals on the inside making noises, making it out um, to the outside. Um, and then the last thing I would say is, uh, that was most of it. Um, so I don't, so, um, it's not in our best interest to load up a bunch of animals in one cage because they, they have to treat them. And with parvo in particular, they're pretty gross. So it's really hard to clean them if you have a whole bunch of puppies that are in one kennel. So we tend to separate out the litters a little bit so they have more room to have diarrhea. Um, and the emails um, are generally when we're trying to answer all those emails coming from other shelters, we're getting hit with the wall of requests and that are basically telling us these all, all are going to die if we don't take them. And so that's when we send those alarming emails to our foster base because we want to you know obviously have a lot of people that can help and um but that's not because they're all at our facility. We actually uh, at our facility right now we have 200 dog kennels and um we have 110 people. Um, we're trying to really push to foster and not have so it's in our best interest. It, it's a lot of people power to take care of animals in cages. And so it's in our best interest to move sick and injured animals to foster as fast as human possible. That helps a lot. That's your question? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, like I said, I've been there. I, I just metric the, I use the facilities to get into the animals because they were sick and all that. Yeah, I, I know the drill. <laughs> I think the rest of the people here are your people. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody, any other citizen would like to comment? Hi, my name is Allison Pierce. I'm a resident and an unsent lover. And I'm also a pretty regular customer of the planet. I foster dogs through the dog house. So I actually have two puppies in my home right now for Parvo exposed. When I contracted Parvo, was treated at the clinic, was uh, successfully treated, and I brought them home. And so I totally understand the concerns about density and noise and have heard the noise at my house when I had a sofa puppy who uh, was missing her sister. But I I also feel like sick animals are not the same as healthy animals. And when I was taking my puppy for parvo treatment, she didn't make a peep in her travel crate, which is pretty rare for a 10-year-old puppy to be confined. And so I just hope we don't um we don't limit APA's ability to do good work by quibbling over kind of numbers of dogs because you know 10 sick parvo puppies are way less trouble than and healthy adult dogs. Um, but I'm fully in support as a person who's also pretty intimately familiar with the going on in this clinic. And I've used some of the funds and services. Like I had a, a fostering meeting and invitation. I had some meeting with cargo care and things like that. So um, even being a resident, being very close to this clinic, I'm fully in support and just happy that my commute time on MOPAC will be shorter if I ever need her services. Thank you. for you. <laughs> Anything else with the commute? Uh, any other committee members? No question? I do. Am I allowed to amend the fence to be eight feet so that we can prevent outside dogs from entering the grounds of the facility? Because there are some dogs that can jump really high. Um, I guess you could recommend that. Then we require a building permit. Um, I think it's only six feet. Yeah, I recommend it. I, I, that was kind of I, I uh, mentioned something. I know deer fawns can't jump more than four feet. I just found out because I just moved to the country. So the building was six, just straight out. Just open. I mean, deer love that requires a building permit. And what would the fence be made out of? Would it be a wood fence or a chain link fence? Probably. I mean, ideally, it would be something that could contain the urine and feces from not being washed in the creek, which would go deeper into the soil. Sure. But I am not familiar with containment of animal yeah, excrement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
the same point you tried to be being placed. If there is a you know a drainage pattern on the plumbing, um, and that was of course you know reviewed when the permits were issued when the house is pretty old, the house is used to you know, the, the office building is pretty old. There was, there was a permit issue for the new construction, and you know there was combinations of that. I mean, as far as whether or not that we were building some sort of wall, if you will, to the stop the natural drainage pattern. We have to go three look back at what's the drainage pattern that is currently exist today, what's approved in the plumbing. Is the house is the house itself uh, on City of Austin wastewater, or is it a septic? Yes. Would you also have a dog run? No dog run. Okay. And with the the is that based on the maximum, which is seven feet, or is that just arbitrary six feet? It's just a standard fence site. It's going to be a standard fence site at the end. But wouldn't we want a fence site that could contain animals that can jump high? And you can bring my diary. I probably yeah. have to understand this part of it. It's doable. But up to seven feet does not require a building permit. And since they're going to be submitting over seven. Since so they're going to be submitting well, site seven. plans. Please. I mean, they, it's they a part of the whole site plan. They should be submitting plans. Unless they want to do outside improvements. As we understand, they're only going to make an, uh, indoor improvements, which will just be for the administrative building permit process. I see. Okay. So yeah. they're just doing interior renovation only. No extra parking spaces since they're parking vans there. No, they, they have, um, they have their, their parking, um, I guess the parking plan again was submitted back in this new development. You know, the, the parking uh, on the site uh, adheres to the existing value of the development of the property. Great. Perfect. Sounds good to me. Satisfied. So, all right, if there's no further comments, um, we'll go ahead and close the comments section of this. And um, let's see, we'll entertain a um, motion and then we'll ask for further discussion. You have a motion on in mind. You've been making copious <laughs> notes. Oh, okay. Everyone's looking at me. Yes, we are. You phrase it, and then I say, "So move." If you want to, of course, <laughs> conduct. This, this, this that, that, adopted here. So that is the course of conduct that we've adopted. <laughs> so we in, in, to to that uh, to that end, I'd like to make a motion, uh, Chair, okay. that we recommend to Council that a special use permit for veterinary services in the neighborhood office district under Section. 150.101 of the Land Development Code be issued to Austin Pets Alive, Inc. at 4942 West Highway 290 with the following agreed to conditions. Number one, that a fence be erected completely around the back property. Number two, that daily collection of animal waste take place. And number three, that the applicant come to the city and seek a temporary special use permit for any fundraising events or any other events in which they'll have 50 or more people on the property at any one time. That's the motion. I second it. Or no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to second it. No, first is to have fun with our course of conduct. He says, I would like to have somebody consider moving too. And then and so and, and I say, so move. <laughs> just, it's okay to change our course of conduct. We're changing we are, yes. we are changeable people. I so so uh, they're flexible. Flex. And so it's been seconded. Uh, so Mr. Mr. Chair, it's now yours. All right. Uh, we have any motion discussion? on the floor. It's been seconded. Is there any further discussion? We, have, we, we do have, we do have staff with their hand up. Just since we, we've been discussing this uh, just recently with the height of the fence, uh, if you want to, was there, if you just said that in your motion, are we, are we going to add a height or? I'm, I'm going to. The second, uh, my, is, the second is, is my, my motion is just fence. fence. Okay. That can be debated and fought no, over no. at city council. Whether it's six or seven, six or seven, 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 
I heard the Seven. position clearly not to have a defined height of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> That's my comment with regard to your and, comment. And, <laughs> and, and I left it out. And apparently I seconded it. So you very good. Second. You may make a some type of um, now you, some motion to have it or, or but we will stick with or or you can make a, a comment I'm, a public comment at yeah, I mean the floor is council. open. No, I said <laughs> uh, subject subject to Mr. Chairman's uh, appointment of who gets to talk, but you know that's yeah. Well, yeah. You're the chairman. I got He's it. <laughs> He's got the hammer. Um, He's got the hammer. Should, should we take a vote of the committee if we think there should be a, a height on the fence? I'm just saying, I've, I know what a dog in heat is like. If there's a dog in heat on the property and there's dogs entering the green belt right there, there's the potential that dogs will hop the fence and be exposed to. I, 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 am, willing, I am willing to amend the motion if the majority of my fellow commissioners agree to seven feet i just don't see it necessary so uh, you will I, not get support from i don't see that. anything wrong with six foot fence uh, if Everybody you want to say a minimum of six it. foot and it'd be up to them okay so i have a six foot fence on part of my property and a deer has never jumped over so i'm not saying a deer so i'm i'm leaving it i'm i'm i'm, I'm gonna yeah. leave it okay uh, fine okay <laughs> all right so we have a motion in a second uh, I'm sorry, we will say a minimum of six feet. A motion amended to a minimum of six feet, consistent with staff's recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Rosso. All right. Motion there? to revise the motion. So moved. <laughs> you want to second that? I'll second that. So, so the amended motion call, call is now on the floor. <laughs> the amended motion is on the floor. Um, any further discussion on that before we take a motion? All right. All in favor of the amendment, amended motion. Aye. Aye. Unanimous as usual, Mr. Klingfeld. Uh, I'd like to make another motion. <laughs> I, 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 this is this well, is the he, one. He, he, well, well, you want, you want, this is one he this quickly is, goes there. No, I, quickly do you want to do that one? No, Go ahead. Uh, I, no, this is your. Uh, we have a course of conduct. But um, he's he's going to jump in here. And she's going to do the second if he's not we'll careful. Her out. That's, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm. No, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to have participation. Sure. Chairman Skewis. Yes, sir. I move that we adjourn. Second. We have a second. All in favor. Aye. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad you have this That's full support. That. I was pulling her back. That's why I was pulling her back. That's why I was pulling her back.